And now for our weekly news segment. All right. Okay, everybody. Um, my room is a mess because I'm moving stuff around, so there's not going to be any camera. <laughs> no worries. Okay, so let's... Um... And I'm back in the U.S. now, so we should sure oh, listen. Okay. Welcome back. Thank you. Oh, my God. The, the, the flight was so long. It was like a whole 20-plus hour <laughs> operation. Oh, yeah? You had, a, you had a transfer in a couple of places, or...? Yeah, there? yeah, just because like before you used to fly just you had just one connection, but now it's so hard to get one connection. Like you fly Munich, then you go into Frankfurt, and then you fly out <laughs> instead of just like one. <laughs> oh wow! When you come when you come into the U.S., the proper response is not welcome. It's oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. No, it's no. The the response is like, okay, who are you? What do you want? Yeah. Why are you coming back? It's crazy. <laughs> It's like pr prove your, prove your innocence. <laughs> yeah, and like I come back with you know like two pounds of cheese and medicine and all the stuff, and then they ask me, oh, what is this? What is that? Blah blah. Who are you planning to kill with the cheese? <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. Uh, I do see we have our special guest waiting in the in the green room, so that that's good. Um, so go ahead, Tony. Okay. Let's let's move it along, and then okay. we'll have the guests jump up. Okay, so we do have a lot. We have a lot uh, in terms of CBDCs. We have a lot in terms of um, the Israel uh, conflict that is happening right now. So we have a lot, a lot of stuff to cover. Uh, the first thing, actually, we're going to start off with uh, Argentina. <laughs> uh, so the Argentine central bank to introduce digital peso bill as soon as possible. Now, as soon as I understand, there's two um, there's two candidates for next year, for the presidential, presidential election in next year. One of them allegedly is Bitcoin friendly, Javier Milei. And then there's one, uh, the other one, Noguera, which wants uh, the project, which is the CBDC, to be presented as soon as possible. So one is pro-CBDC, the other one is become friendly, but he has publicly proclaimed the dollarization of the Argentine, Argentine economy. Um, Noguera, which is pro-CBDC, he discussed that he defends the idea of a CBDC because the key feature of the CBDC is its traceability, which will allow the government to collect taxes. Now. Of course, it's nice, you know, to be able to collect taxes, but if they were used for the correct things, such as education, you know, infrastructure, and not not to to fund horrible things like war and so on, and um, to use our money for nefarious actions, so um, so it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. I, I'm I'm really curious of who's gonna who's going to uh, win next year. But yeah, uh, Argentina is on to CBC. Then we also have, um, actually, let's discuss Finland. Finland is also on uh, the CBDC. They work on instant payment system embrace and they embrace the digital euro. The Bank of Finland is coordinating the creation of a Finnish instant payment solution compatible with European standards. And it's a short article, but this is what they basically talk about. The possible introduction of a digital euro would give consumers the option of paying with central bank money wherever electronic payments uh, is accepted. So they're working on their own solution. Argentina is working on their own solution. Um, then we have, actually, let's discuss this one. The ECB officials moved to preparation phase for the digital euro. And what is interesting is that every single time they they use the verbiage, well, though the issuance of a digital euro is not a certainty, and they use the same verbiage in the US, officials with the European Central Bank are moving to the next phase of the project. So... I feel like they do this on purpose. They say, it, like I said in, in the past, it may not come. We're working on it. We don't know. But of course, that is going to come eventually. They're just trying to play it off as if they don't know. But of course, it's going to come. Um, and they also are trying to play the fact that, oh, you're going to have the CBDC, but you're still going to have the euro and the dollar. So you get to choose. <laughs> but you, you get to choose for a while <laughs> until they, they force you to use the CBDC. Such as such as in uh, Nigeria with the Inaira, it wasn't used before. It was 0.5% usage, and now jumped up because they're forced to. Uh, but in an October 18th notice, the ECB said it plans to start lay laying the foundation for the possible issuance of a digital euro, beginning on November 1st. So it's all coming very soon. And then they did post on on Twitter, and I have it here as well. With a digital euro, you would have an additional payment option that combines the advantages of a central bank money with the ease and practicality of modern digital payments. What's in it for you? <laughs> Find out more. What's in it for you? 
surveillance, negative interest rates, and many, many other horrible things. That's what's in it for you. Can, can you play the video of, uh, what's her name, Lagarde? Christine Lagarde? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There yeah, let's do this one now. One. Okay, so let's play. So she said, the euro is key to our European unity, <laughs> a digital euro existing alongside cash will future-proof our currency, it will be safe, easy to use, and free of charge, while the decision whether to issue a digital euro will be taken later. Again, we're not sure. Uh, we're, we're now launching the preparation phase. So that means that it's coming. So let's watch the video now. The digital euro is on the move. Yesterday, the governing council of the ECB approved the opening of the preparation phase. It will be a journey, and we will walk the journey together with the legislator. All European institutions will be involved to make sure that Europe is equipped with the currency of the future. Cash is here to stay. You will have all options, cash and digital cash. So what does it mean for you? For consumers, it would be free and easy to use everywhere in the euro area. All of that, of course, is subject to the legislative process. Cash or digital, the choice will be yours. Your oh. euro, your choice. <laughs> for, for now. <laughs> I feel like I'm back in 1995 <laughs> watching like yeah, a movie about the, you know, the future. Ah, good old propaganda. And, and the here we your are. euro, your choice. <laughs> it's arrived, guys. It's, these are no longer, you know, the, the no, movies that we watch on TV. Don't tell me this doesn't look like the beginning of some of that movie, like uh, like The Hunger Games or something yeah, like that. It's, yeah. the, one, the crappy uh, chroma key in the background. What's going on with that? I mean, like, is the European Central Bank or something? Cannot they afford better quality video? Once the pendants, like the, the I, I I didn't notice the how you call that the the jewelry he has on the elbow. Oh yeah, like shining all the time with 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 little sparks of color. It's it's like an evil something. It looks like it's, it looks like one of those things that you see on on disaster movies at the beginning, when they <laughs> see it, when you see like in the TV in the background. It's like. Right. From now on, everything's yours. What the fuck? It's a nobody thing for the for the coming dystopia. Nobody tells them that it, it really looks and sounds like very dystopian, and kind of make it more friendly, like some green in the background, like kids running around, something like that. No, no, they have to do it like this. You, you will have a choice, guys. She says you will have a choice: <laughs> the of euro course. or the euro. It's the future, oh, guys. It's not a choice. Lady you are in or out of the system. Uh, what's crazy? What's interesting about the digital euro the, in their proposal? They're, they're talking about uh, an offline cash-like option as well, where people will be able to transfer a bearer asset peer-to-peer uh, -peer offline using hardware. This was also talked about in the U.S. Um, I forget what the proposal is called. It's the eCash. It's it's called like the eCash Act. We had Rohan Gray on the show on Monero Topia, uh, Monero Talk like two years ago. He I think he actually is the guy who drafted this proposal that was then passed in the U.S. where they're researching this concept. But uh, we're seeing it now as part of what the EU is looking to do. So I don't really understand how the tech is going to work, but supposedly they've figured out a way to uh, transfer digital cash peer to peer offline. Yeah, and um, I don't know if you guys all picked up on that, but that's that's pretty interesting. No, it's very interesting, yeah. and I like um, how Andreas mentioned Hunger Games. It is like Hunger Games. You get to choose between this weapon and this weapon. Your survival yeah. depends on it. <laughs> the choice will be yours. <laughs> and as always, it comes with a disclaimer: as you know, it's cash, it's digital cash, but it's it, the you know, as long as we're able to uh, prevent terrorism and money laundering, so whatever protections need to be in place for those purposes. So. Mm -hmm. That's 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 the the opener there for how they're going to have the excuse and the tech to track and surveil everyone. But it's awesome. cash, guys. It's cash. The way uh, they mentioned, what's in it for you? 
<laughs> not good stuff. Um, and then one more thing with CBDC. So the EU data protection regulators urge anonymity for smaller transactions in digital euro. They want it uh, to make it in such a way so that in small transactions, there's not going to be any form of traceability. Now, of course, if they really want to, I think that they can even trace that as well. They say the authorities also strongly recommend establishing a privacy threshold for online transactions below which offline and online low value transactions are not subject to tracking for anti-money laundering and combating the financing of terrorism. Nice. So you can buy bread and they won't know. But if you buy two, they may will. <laughs> yes, yes, for below for which online and offline. See, so they, they're they're proposing that they figured out a way how to do offline digital cash transactions, which is huge and very important. But not for criminals. Yes, yeah. but not for criminals. Yeah, you, you can always buy like a thousand separate breads. <laughs> yeah, to pay for a car. <laughs> <laughs> What if they track like how many breads you bought and they're like, Andres, you bought 50. That's enough. Mm -hmm. You, you know, have hit your bread we, we have a for the week. Here. No more bread for you. No more bread for you. <laughs> we have a saying here in Spanish that is something like make the law, make the the like the hack or the cheek or something like that. Mm -hmm. So it's basically, yeah, you put the threshold on privacy and then everybody just makes a bunch of really small transactions. And then you limit the amount of transactions per, I don't know, item class that you can do. And so then people like, start buying bread and tomatoes and stuff for fake. So it's it's like, a, it's really like a, like a, like a, how do you call it? Like, a, like a worms race. Can you imagine if you buy like an apartment and let's say it's like 50,000 euro and then you can only transact anonymously for 100 euro and then you say, Hey, so how much time you have? Because we have a lot of transactions yes. to do. <laughs> Let me batch a bunch of transactions. <laughs> it's a good thing that Bonero has low fees. Yeah, 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 which is good. Um, yeah, so that's that's with CBDCs. Um, again, just notice how they say that it may come, but it's inevitably going to come. Uh, now, a bit of Monero. So, um, enhance your network and support decentralized communication. Pay with Monero to get white listed so that your timeline is free of spam, bots, and toxic Bitcoin maxis. So, pay Monero, not for relays. It's uh, pmnr.xmr.rocks. That's it. Is anybody, is anybody trying this? Anybody use this? Mm, I haven't. Interesting concept. So the idea is by paying it, it eliminates spam and you're getting just Monero related content. Yeah, no toxic Bitcoin maxis. <laughs> there's a uh, there's a GitHub project um, that is, it's like a pre-built Nostr server that's designed to accept like tiny bit of Monero for fee to be able to get on it. Um, let me yeah. see if I can find it. Well, I think that's what he, isn't that what he used here? I assume. I think that's... That's what this is, I believe. No, no. Click necessary. on the link. What does the link go to? Is that is that his just the relay? Mm. I think the one that Tax is, is talking about is is one that replaces the whole tipping with a Lightning Network mechanism with tipping with Monero. Oh, really? It has, it has nothing to do. Well, I mean, there was an, an idea about something like that, like a mega okay. fork that replaced the the whole tipping with Lightning. With Monero. Oh yeah, it's Neo. It was near narrow stir, narrow stir. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> the the whole idea behind a paid Monero um, Nostr relay is just more like creating content and ensuring that you support the the relay. It doesn't necessarily have have to do it with the with the tipping mechanism. Hmm. Right, right, right. Okay. Yeah, maybe we could have Alex jump on one of these days to uh, give us an update on that. But but cool initiative. Nice to see. Who? Okay. Uh, you, you don't have to read this whole post. This guy, though, he he ended up blocking me this week. He he did a spaces last Saturday after this show, and I jumped in on it. And he had it was a huge spaces. I mean, he, the guy's got like if you could click on him, I don't know, he's got tons of followers. Yeah, I'm gonna click on him now. Um, he's he's an attorney. He's a professor, I think, at George or, or at Duke Duke Law School. 
And he did a whole spaces last week on how basically uh, basically saying we, we should we should ban crypto, particularly things like Monero, because of what we're seeing on how they're being used to fund it terrorism. terrorism. <laughs> and he, yeah, he's he's putting in. I mean, go go look at his his Twitter feed. The amount of effort he's putting in and pushing this initiative is 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 kind of scary. And uh, he's throwing out a ton of misinformation. And his argument boils down to he just doesn't see uh, the utility that crypto has to offer. He, he, he kind of sees it as offering zero utility. Uh, and the only thing it is used for is for like criminal purposes. So complete There's idiot. an old man that doesn't understand technology, just like everyone else in Congress. No, I think it's well, much if- worse. I think he completely does understand technology and he's just an evil, evil piece of shit that's out there trying to... Uh, basically put forth this regulation because he stands to benefit from it. He works, he works as a regulator. He consults these guys. He's the guy, he's the guy that will probably end up like writing the regulation when it gets written. You know, that's like this. He, oh, he's, he's one of those people. He's, he's aligned with them to the point, but it, it's, he sells himself as this Patriot American loving Liberty loving guy. You have a whole spiel on his spaces. Like guys, hear me out. I love America. Just like everybody else. I love free speech, but you know, he's, he's a big second amendment guy. I mean the sure. hypocrisy. It just makes no sense. Like, let, let's let's ban crypto, uh, which if you banned it tomorrow, terrorism w- would absolutely not go away, right? I think we could all any anybody would agree to that. Um, Hamas would, you know, if if you were able to ban go back in time and ban crypto a I don't year, think ago, it would put a single ago, dent. It wouldn't have terrorism. stopped Hamas from doing what they did or any other terrorists from doing what they want to do. But if you were to ban guns, not suggesting you do so. I'm a big Second Amendment guy myself. But if you were to ban guns, that would have a tremendous effect on terrorism overnight. Without no, a doubt. No, it wouldn't. But it would. It would. <laughs> no, it wouldn't. <laughs> if you could eliminate guns, it would be harder to uh, mass kill people. Right? I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm just giving you an example here like mm-hmm. of how absurd his, his logic is. Where he's a big Second Amendment guy, uh, he sees the utility in guns, and is willing to, um, you know, live with the fact that guns can be used in good and bad ways. Yet he doesn't apply the same logic to crypto at all. Um, so that's, mm. that, that but this this is what we're up against, uh, and it's it's unfortunate. And they don't even want to engage; they just block and move on and and spew their their propaganda. <laughs> just like this well um yeah it's he also wrote that um he made the case that cri- if crypto were so easy to track then te- the tens of thousands of friends on their attackers would all get caught and all that stuff but, but what actually you know kills people is not the the crypto it's the motivation behind the person the education and then the weapon like doug said so that's what actually kills people and yeah there should be way tighter regulations around guns in florida you can just you can just win guns like nothing and all sorts of stuff like oktoberfest stuff i've heard from a friend and all kinds of stuff they're so easy to get it's kind of it's kind of scary any any criminal that wants a gun even if guns are banned will have a gun and then uh and then a normal person will not have a gun yeah like your normal average law-abiding citizen would not have a gun but every criminal on the street, you better believe, would have a gun. Mm-hmm. Right. S- s- same concept with crypto. They- these are just tools uh, they can use for bad purposes and good purposes. Um, and ultimately, I mean, and crypto is just a communication tool. Mm-hmm. So to think that uh, by cutting off people's ability to have access to uncensored communication that the world is going to be a worse off place is just absurd and basically you're saying you, you just you don't believe in humanity at that point i think um based on what you said it's it's kind of good if we sk- if we skip to the chain analysis um report because it's very interesting and then we'll go into the next one so yeah the, cha- the chain analysis report is interesting because it's a complete rebuttal of all of the points that uh guys like this are trying to make recently with the data and it shows that the data is actually uh, saying otherwise in terms of whether or not crypto is actually being used to finance terrorism. So they said, although terrorism financing is a very small portion of the already very small portion of cryptocurrency transaction volume that is illicit, 
some terrorist organizations raise, store, and transfer funds using cryptocurrency. So um, there's no doubt that funds raised by terrorist org organizations, no matter how small, are significant and every method should be investigated. This is, of course. Uh, then what is interest interesting is that they make the case that um, they also talk about service providers and how, and that how obviously, um, a server a service provider is not made for you know terroristic customers they're just made for anybody and then if you know if terrorists choose to, to use them they do and then they also had well what they're, what they're talking about there too is with the service providers is talking about how it's if you can kind of, kind of go back down to that section how it's being misquoted and misused so they're showing these these service providers uh, the untrained eye, it might appear that 82 million worth of cryptocurrency was raised for terrorist financing in the example above, but it's much more likely that a small portion of these funds were intended for terrorist activity. So they're looking at all, like, they're saying, all right, the service provider had eight, $80 million worth of crypto flow through it. Mm -hmm. uh, therefore, $80 million worth of crypto is being used to finance terrorism because some some portion of it we know is connected to a wallet that's associated with terrorism, mm -hmm. which is completely absurd. It's flawed. So yeah. Maybe maybe, only, maybe only, it was only a hundred dollars worth of crypto that went to that went to that wallet that was associated mm -hmm. with terrorism, and it went through this service provider that has hundreds of millions of dollars going through it. So now now the the stats that they're putting out there, like this guy uh, John, whatever, is saying hundreds of millions of dollars are, are being are being used to finance uh, to finance terrorism uh, with crypto. Uh, completely misconstruing the facts, which is, you know, this guy, he's he's well-educated, he's an attorney, so he's literally purposely misconstruing these facts. That's that's the thing, right? That he's, he's willfully out there spreading misinformation about this for the purposes of trying to rally people around in this moment, rally people around banning cryptocurrency, when in reality there's no data to show why you would want to take uh, steps like that, given given the effect it would you have. You should be honored to be blocked by him. Clearly, <laughs> you were a threat. Yeah, but, you know, we need to be out there, you know, responding to this guy and spreading the truth mm -hmm. um, because, unfortunately, he's he's going to make progress. Because mm -hmm. people don't, people don't well, have the time or, the you know, the... To, to actually look into these things and understand them on a well, deeper. That's the that's the good thing about the internet. He has a platform that he can talk on and he can ban you from. And you have a platform right here, right now, that we are talking on <laughs> and that your message gets out and what you want people to know gets out. Yeah, for sure. But the only problem is we're in silos, right? We need to get we need to get to his people, the people that are are listening and following him. Um yeah. Yes, but with any with anything these days, do those people want to hear our message? See, that's the thing is we've got to we've got to consider the fact that uh, there's a lot of people in this world who do not want to hear the other side. They want to agree with one thing and one thing only, and gosh darn it, that's all they're going to agree with. And there's nothing you can say or do to convince them otherwise. Yeah, it's really it's really a meme war at the end of the day. It's an information war and a meme war. And uh, I don't know, for the general public, unfortunately, I would say they're winning in that in that meme war, hmm. if you're, you know, and the meme being cryptocurrency is used to fund terrorism. Um, when I ran for Congress, that's one of the things that happened to me it was after I ran, I had somebody anonymously sent a letter to every single person that donated to my campaign. Uh, with a big picture of me and a picture of, it was, I think it was like ISIS or whatever, and they're holding <laughs> the guns and a big Monero logo and saying, Doug Tooman supports uh, Monero. Monero is used to fund terrorism. If you don't donate to his, if he runs again and you don't donate to his campaign again, you won't hear from us. If you do, you will. Like, and then threatening everybody. It was, it was like wild. It was bizarre. Uh, it was crazy. I don't know where it came from and who's it's behind. It's like soft blackmail. Yeah, I mean that. The, it's it took a lot of effort. It took a lot of effort to do that. I'm talking. They actually physically mailed these these letters to to all these people, and it was. Oh I was getting phone calls. It's scary to get a letter like that, anonymous letter with, 
pictures of people holding machine guns and you know that you wrote a check to this guy and now you're being threatened saying if you do it again you're going to hear from us oh my it's God. really sad it's basically it's really terrorist sad. activity Not even <laughs> yeah. Yeah. it's it's really awful that like these kinds of things like the general public just doesn't see these kinds of things until it's too late mm-hmm. yeah and That's- then there's and then they're either screwed or they have to to fight with each other to get anything so that, that's why I say, right? So it's like we could say, all right, well, it's good to block you, blah, blah, blah. But we have to we have to be out there spreading our meme. I know we do it and we're constantly trying to grow our community, but we got to get out to the masses, man. They got they got to know, they got to understand. Uh granted, if if Monero's ever banned, we'll 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 keep pushing forward, but we don't want to get to that point. People people should need to understand that Monero is a good thing. It aligns with the values of open and free societies. They need to. They need to hear that meme. Hmm. Well, moving on with um, again on Israel because we have a couple more to go through. This one is particularly interesting. It's from the U.S. Department of the Treasury, and so they said today the U.S. Department of the Treasury's Office of Foreign Assets Control (OFAC) imposed sanctions on ten key Hamas terrorist group members, operatives, and financial f- facilitators in Gaza and elsewhere, including Sudan, Turkey, Algeria, and Qatar. No. What is interesting is that they mentioned the um, so Treasury Janet L. Yellen said the U.S. Treasury has a long history of effectively disrupting their finance, um, and we will not hesitate to use our tools against Hamas. We will continue to take all steps necessary to deny Hamas terrorists the ability to raise and use funds to carry out atrocities and terrorize the people of Israel. The, uh, that includes by imposing sanctions and coordinating with allies and partners to track, freeze, and seize any Hamas related assets in their jurisdiction. So what is kind of, okay, inherently, obviously it's a good thing. If you can, if we can have, if humanity was actually overall benevolent and we would have something like Monero, but then we could somehow disrupt terrorist activity as well and, you know, get along in this way, which is not happening, then that'll be great, of course. But then now we have something like Monero with which you can donate to Hamas if you want to. Or, or you don't. So you get to have that, that option, uh, fortunately and, uh, and unfortunately. Now, um, what this basically means is that the US, which is a country far away from Israel, they can manipulate, they can track, freeze, and seize people's money within a whole different country. So this is international, which means that your money is really not safe. Now, again, of course, this is... Hamas and they shouldn't get any any more money to to uh, do the reprehensible things that they do, but just just as as a thought that they can manipulate your money no matter where, where you are, and it's a, it's not, and it's the U.S. that is manipulating that money. I'm, I'm sure Israel can do it as well, but just like the, that, it's an outside entity that can do it as well, which is interesting. Yeah, no, another good point. Back back to what we were saying before and. You know this this action is what is now being spread and spread around the internet as another example of needing to crack down on cryptocurrency because yep. of funding of terrorism so if you scroll all the way down they they do talk about how crypto is used and so you had uh people like john out there quoting this article uh, but if you actually if you actually read it it even says uh in the in the action that's taken here um, it basically says how the, the lion share, the vast majority of assets that um, these quote unquote terrorists were were using or, or what was being used for as a means of financing them were things like, you know, shell companies that were set up, these fake companies where, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars were, were are being flown or are, are flowing through them. And then they get to the cryptocurrency part and they reference one wallet that received, I think, $2,000 worth of cryptocurrency that they hmm. that they have proof of. This is wow, after so much they, terrorist financing. This is after explaining how, you know, they're using all these other method, methods that have they've traditionally done since before crypto even existed. Hundreds of millions of dollars that are flowing through these um, essentially fake hmm. companies that are being set up. Uh, but that's not the part that's talked about. It's ta- you know they what's referenced is the crypto part where it was two thousand dollars worth of crypto. I want to be clear though too, like you know I I think the argument of saying 
because some people are out there saying, well, crypto isn't you effectively isn't used to fund terrorism. And I agree with that. As of today, it's it's really not if you look at the da data. But the fact is, it's going to be come the lion's share at one point. It's just a better form of transacting value, right? That's why we're all here. That's why we use it. That's why we like it. It's a better tool for those purposes. Um, so it's going to, at some point, be used more for those purposes, just like it's going to be used more for everything else, right? You're, we're going to use it for uh, everything we do on the internet. Um, and so we need, we need to get ahead of that and realize that the final argument isn't that crypto isn't used for for funding terrorism. Other things are. It's mm -hmm. that okay. It's a better technology for for transacting value, and we need to talk about all the good things that come with that. Just like the internet, right? I mean, the internet mm -hmm. is used by terrorists, but we don't sit here and talk around talk about how we should ban the internet and get rid of the internet. We talk about all the good things that the internet has done for society and will continue to do society and all the great value it will give to society. And that's the ultimate argument that needs to be made for crypto and Monero in particular. Not that it's not used and it's barely used for terrorism, because the fact is that at some point it will be used. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's about the education of the person, not about because, yeah, I mean, terrorists, they use shoes. Should we ban shoes? Should we ban toothbrushes or certain things? It sounds crazy. Or, yeah, I mean, guns don't shoot themselves. I have a solution. Post. Ban mm -hmm. water. All the terrorists die. Yeah. <laughs> so does yeah. everyone else. But maybe that's what they want, right? Oh, my God. Mm. Well, they do want uh, they do want uh, population control so that we don't hurt the environment. So that's possible. Oh, they right. want to kill like three-fourths of humans on Earth. Oh my god, that's a whole nother discussion too. <laughs> um, well, and then one we have reason, a... sorry, but one no, reason that that maybe maybe terrorists aren't being funded more with cryptocurrencies today is that basically many of them get funded by governments, mm -hmm. which don't which don't use cryptocurrencies as much. <laughs> so <laughs> that's why we are not seeing more terrorist financing. With crypto, it's just that the right. governments. So what you're, so what you're saying is that the governments are the terrorists. I'm not saying that all governments are terrorists. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not naming names. I'm just saying so that it's the same like with money laundering. You know, it, it's like yeah, what's the most offending cause of money laundering? It's like HSBC, not not Bitcoin or Monero or whatever. So I don't see. Yeah, yeah. I don't. See, I don't see. Yeah, any closer that the adoption of cryptocurrency by terrorists or money launderers or uh, or narcs or whatever, just because basically it runs on fiat by design. Exactly, good points. So w w once the, once the government starts using crypto more, then those numbers will will go up. <laughs> Biden just you know printed up a hundred billion dollars to give out to to fight fight in Ukraine and fight in Israel, right? Uh, but nobody nobody scoffs at that because, you know, we're not terrorists. Yeah. And um, talking about Biden, uh, so Senator Elizabeth Warren joins more than 100 lawmakers to ask Biden about plans to prevent crypto finance terrorism. Now, again, in itself, obviously we, want, we don't want terrorism to be financed in any way, which is either for crypto or traditional finance, we don't want that to happen. But um, this is their plan to create the problem and then to show you the solution. So what is the problem? Well, the war. What is the solution? Well, I think now we should crack down on crypto finance, uh, finance terrors, terrorism and all this stuff. So it's all planned. It's not like, oh, this war erupted and now all of a sudden, mm, I think we should look into this now. No, it was all planned from before that we want to crack down on crypto. We want we want to essentially make it into a very into a form of CBDC eventually. That's what I believe. With most of them, they can do it with Monero, and then um, so that eventually you're just gonna use their CBDC, and that that's what they're trying to do. And they're using this war as an excuse that now they care about terrorism and you know they want to help and all this stuff. Um, yeah, so this is what basically this article. Um, talks about and then uh, we have um so why elizabeth warren is wrong when it comes to um 
Israel and um, you know financing terrorism and all the stuff. I couldn't see the whole thing because I need to pay. <laughs> Unless I go to the uh, archive, actually. Thanks, uh, Tux, for that from last time. <laughs> um, but even this part is is good if if I read. It didn't la take long for the media to zero in on Hamas's uh, cryptocurrency fundraising, notably via the stablecoin Tether. Um, Elizabeth Warren and Roger Marshall leaped at the chance to use this revelation to boost their crypto regulation bill. Uh, but their attempt to exploit uh, the October 7th attacks to advance their legislative agenda is misguided. There's no evidence that crypto is used more often or more effectively than the traditional banking system to finance terrorism. Hamas acquired crypto on transparent blockchains, not via private blockchains and crypto privacy tools such as Monero or Zcash. Hamas use, use Bitcoin and Tether, which are both which are both transparent. So as we discussed, this is about just boosting their crypto regulation bill and not necessarily that they actually, in my eyes, that they actually care about the terrorist um, act, acts themselves. This uh, this was written, that article was written by J.W. Uh, how do you pronounce his, what's his last name? Vert? Vert? Love Vert. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so he, he's a big Zcash guy. He's also he also a big, big Monero. He's into Monero as well. I think mm -hmm. he's, I feel like he's slowly moving over to Monero from Zcash. He was on my he was on Monero talk at some point. Uh, mm -hmm. Interesting guy, good guy. He's uh, he's out there trying to make arguments for 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 us for the other side, and he made very very good arguments as well. So, yep. Um, then we have uh, Fin FinCEN proposes new regulation to enhance transparency in convertible virtual currency mixing and combat terrorist financing. Again, some more uh, terrorist financing. So today, the U.S. Department of Tre the Treasury's Financial Crimes Enforcement Network announced a notice of proposed rulemaking that identifies international convertible virtual currency mixing, CVC, mixing as a class of transactions of primary, primary money laundering concern. So um, today's actions underscores Treasury's commitment to combating the exploitation of convertible virtual currency mixing by a broad range of illicit actors, including state-affiliated cyber actors, cyber criminals, and terrorist groups. More broadly, the Treasury Department is aggressively combating illicit use of all um, aspects of the CVC, CVC eco ecosystem by terrorist groups, including Hamas and Palestinian Islam uh, Jihad. And this is what it basically talks about. And the lack of transparency surrounding international CVC mixing activities and acute money laundering and national security risk and increasing transparency in connection with this activ activity is a key component to denying illicit actors access to the US and global financial systems. So I don't know if we could bring body up to, we could quickly, I mean, this is just a, another huge, huge story. So much, so much, so much is happening, right? I mean, the, the, gov the government is really mounting their attack right now. Um, it's crazy that this, this dropped this week as well. FinCEN proposing these new regulations where the way it's currently drafted is extremely broad. Uh, I read the whole thing, what they're, what they're proposing. It could be, you know, you could look at it and you can you can interpret it as um, the way they describe a mixer as uh, including even the Monero protocol itself. Um, it's written so broadly. Uh, Body, are you there? Can we can we bring Body up? I don't know if he's there. Um, I um, oh, he's here. He's in the room. Oh yeah, yeah. Hey, Body, you there? Hey. Hey, Body. Oh. Just I know I know you took a good look at this as well. I saw you tweeting about it. What what's what's your overall take on this? Yeah, so um, it, it certainly seems coincidental that um, in combination with the OFAC declaration and uh, the bullshit about how um, crypto is this massive terrorism financing tool, and now there's you know the mixing aspect here. Um, good on you that you read the whole thing. Um, I also read it. I. Uh, it, it seems like their language is just getting more broad when they issue these declarations. Um, so this is proposed rulemaking. Obviously, it's not rules yet, but if implemented, right, all of the FinCEN nations will have to, like, implement some version of their guidance. Um, I, I was trying to see if I could figure out, was there any direct reference to Monero? Obviously, they talk about mixing. Um, so there's this one excerpt um, that, uh, that I'll just read really quickly. It says that... Um, they kind of list like A, B, C, D, E of things that could be determined to be mixing. And the one that caught my eye was, was C. It said, using programmatic or algorithmic code to coordinate, manage, or manipulate the structure of a transaction. Like, 
how how broad is that sounds like anything to me that sounds like any cryptocurrency um okay but it says this method involves the use of software that coordinates two or more persons transactions together in order to obfuscate the individual unique transactions um so that very much sounds like it could it could um involve monero uh it continues that's this is one sentence sorry i'm uh, sort of pausing here, it says uh, to obfuscate the individual unique transactions by providing multiple potential outputs from a coordinated input, decreasing the probability of determining, determining both intended persons for each unique transaction. So I think like in an SAT style contextual reading of what this says, Monero would not be included, but that kind of doesn't matter because of, of how broad the entire paper is written. Um, yeah. It seems like they're trying to capture basically everything. But the odd thing is that um, despite mentioning darknet markets extensively and ransomware and tornado cash and um, and uh, Bitcoin fog and, and I think like one other, uh, they notably avoided mentioning Monero in, in any capacity. Um, so I, it, I don't even think they use the term. Uh, what is the term they use? Anonymous, uh, anonymy enhancing cryptocurrencies, AECs, I think they're calling them, right? Yeah, uh, they avoided that the usage of that term. Yeah, they didn't say that either. But yeah, uh, you're right. It is so like so. If you look at just before the the such as examples, which were, you were going through, and they have pooling, and then the one that you mentioned uh, before the, the those examples, they just say the definition of CVC mixing. The term CVC mixing means <laughs> facilitation of CVC transactions in a manner that obfuscates the source, destination. Or amount so, sounds familiar, right? <laughs> Whenever I'm describing Monero, right? This is literally the three <laughs> pillars I talk about involved in one or more transactions, regardless of the type of protocol or service use. So that that part, I think, is what captures Monero. Just the initial definition above. If you scroll above to, I think, where you are, yeah. where they just say the definition of CVC mixing before they go into the examples of such as. Um, it's an extremely broad, very purposefully broad. Yeah. I'm trying to fully understand the implication. So this is, you know, obviously this is just a draft. This is a proposal, but they're saying if this were to pass, it's basically reg regulations that essentially like exchanges would have to follow. Right. And if they, uh, it's basically going to increase the amount of reporting that they're going to have to do if they detect that some crypto transaction had previously gone through CVC mixing, then they have to report that, right? Is Here's what I don't understand is that I thought that these regulated exchanges were already required to that's collect that's my that's name, my social slave number and date of birth and all that crap. Like I thought they already had to do that. So what's the difference here? Well, the difference is anytime there's an action, so they, they already have all your info, but now anytime you would send like, I guess, crypto to the exchange and now they, ha they have to put in the due diligence to now figure out whether or not it was previously mixed. And if it was, they then have to send that instance to the federal government saying, oh, body just sent this crypto that looked like it was mixed. And how uh, far back do they have to go? Because it looks like what, a, what every like 10 transactions or something like that in or something like that is going to be mixed like one in 10. So like you can go like 10 steps back or six steps back or whatever. And it, you're going to find a mix somewhere. Right. And they list so many things too. Like they talk about single use address, peeling, uh, chain hopping, intentionally uh, programmed delays. And they even use the word structuring. They talked about um, like multiple small transactions to the same person um, that much like you would try and structure to stay under the $10,000 limit, you know, when you're sending to a banker or someone, they even talked about structuring. So it's like, it, it, it almost might be so broad as to be practically useless because then exchanges will just give every transaction to, um, you know, to, to the IRS or, or whoever, to the government, which I kind of assume that they're already doing anyways. I, I like that's your adversary in a lot of ways. You just have to assume that they have all that. Right. And really, really what this does is it gives all these chain analysis companies more work, right? This is, this is a huge, this is a huge government contract, like a huge contract basically coming down the pipe for them. If this were to pass, they would now, yeah. now all, all these, all these exchanges, they're already using chain analysis, but now I guess they would have to use them even more so they could be in compliance. Up and up until chain analysis gets debunked in court with all these court cases saying that, hey, this does not actually work. And then the government's going to be 
then people are going to be upset because the government spent all this money on these chain analysis contracts and stuff like that. Yeah, I don't know. That doesn't seem to matter, though. <laughs> I think this still pushes ahead, even if we have another arm of the government to the judiciary saying, well, we have court cases where we have proof that this stuff doesn't really work. It seems like uh, this arm of the government is still pushing in this direction where they, they want this regulation to be passed and, and this, this, this due diligence to be done, even if it technically doesn't work. Yeah, I mean, they, they can still use parallel construction. Um, it, parallel construction is where they use illegal spying methods that they created in the Patriot Act and all the other acts and, of Congress since then, um, where they're spying on you illegally, you don't know about it and you can't challenge it in court because it's top secret and you can't bring that data to court. They use it to construct a case against you, but parallel, they feed that information to law enforcement so that law enforcement knows where to look. So they can like find the probable cause they need to get the warrant to look at the thing, pretending as if they hadn't used illegal methods the entire time. Um, so like the chain analysis that does work, that might not have ever even be brought to court to be challenged. You know, like chain analysis is a broad set of tools uh, that that people that these companies use to to try and track transactions. So some of them are crap, and I I would be very um, careful right now. So for example, the Romanoff case. Um, is it Sterling Romanoff? I, I can't with, with Tor Eklund. Yeah. Um, that could be a psyop, right? That might be a psyop by the government trying to like bring <clears throat> bring some terrible, like some crappy chain analysis to court, so that people think, oh, chain analysis doesn't really work. When they're like, yeah, but really, we've got the stuff that does work. We just brought this to to psyop the the crypto people. I think that's a legitimate possibility, given how badly the government has bumbled this. Now, the government sucks, and they're, they're often incompetent anyway, so they could just be that. But I, I, I'm just wary. <laughs> well. We'll, we'll be talking about this a lot more. Uh, we don't have to talk about it anymore here today. Uh, I, I'm going to have Seth on, I think, next week for a Monero talk, and I th he's coming. He's going to be posting an article on this, so I'll have him on, and we'll we'll beat the dead horse that it is. Okay. So, what do you guys think about the EU demanding Meta and TikTok um, trying to curb this information from Israel Hamas war? This is very, very interesting. Um, yeah, it's, you know, the, gov the government getting involved, uh, trying to be uh, controlled information, right? On wanting to be the central authority on, on what is truth. Um, which, it's dangerous. I mean, we go, you go on social media, there obviously is a problem there uh, with, with things that are false being spread. We talked about this last week, right? And AI and how it could be used. Uh, but at the same time, do we want to live in a world where there's one central authority that decides what is and is not the truth? That's that's we're at war with East Asia. Yeah, yeah it's not like Meta and TikTok are gonna pull up the history books and then they're gonna go over every single <laughs> you know piece of information and be like, okay, this is misinformation. This you know that's that's not going to happen. Now, what we don't want to see, of course, is live streams from you know you know with live killings and terrorist terrorist attacks we don't want to see that of course but um you know so there should obviously they should of course uh, go against this information but um well i mean inf information's information i don't i don't know where i stand you know um yeah. it's it's people need to decide whether or not they want to see that information and mm -hmm. then people need to decide whether or not they think it's true yeah that's true yeah that's true also, a lot of people just go on, on TikTok and all these platforms, and whatever they see first, they, they believe that is true. But That's most of the time, it's just reheated, the same reheated burrito over and over again that people are trying to use for likes, even though they probably don't even know what they're talking about. And then you just get more of that algorithm. And so We're just transitioning into a phase where nobody believes anything. Um, that's, yeah. that's, that's Everything's weird. a psyop. <laughs> yeah. Kind of thinking, like, even the books I'm reading, I mean, history and all that stuff is it even true why am i allowed to read it i'm always so wary about this stuff you know <laughs> yeah. um then we have um i'm gonna play this in a little bit um edwards, edwards Snowden on bitcoin but then let's just discuss some more things and then we'll go back to that video uh the end of uh libri inc so um this is the perfect this is the, this is the opposite end right so you you have things like TikTok and stuff where they're being approached by governments and being forced to to censor and uh governments are asking them what information they can and can't keep up and here you had library 
which is a project uh, that doesn't allow that wouldn't effectively doesn't allow that to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, it's censorship resistant. Anybody was able, well, I say was, but you still can um, be able to post videos up there. It's a, essentially a decentralized YouTube. It did quite well. I, I, I thought it was a very impressive project, but they're being the, the company that ran it is being forced to shut down because of the security act uh, securities law. They were the library token was basically labeled a security, and they're being forced to shut down and sell off all their assets. But the underlying tech is still up and running. The decentralized system that runs library is my understanding. So, so clearly, if you're going to do something like that, you need to not be in the United States or not be in a country that's going to to deal with that. Um, or you need to make it completely decentralized with no head to cut off, like the internet and like Monero. Right, and and don't and don't formulate it in a way where it can be interpreted as as being a security, right? Which is basically what you're saying, right? Um, it needs to be it needs to be truly decentralized. It can't have a, it can't have a token where you know we've gone through this many times on the show, right? Where we talked about uh, how things are being labeled securities, uh, and unfortunately, library fell fell strongly into it into the definition of what is security, um, and they weren't able to avoid that. The picture that they posted is kind of funny, though. So uh, it's Obi Wan Kenobi, and he says, um, "You can win your prophetic life form if you strike me down. I shall become more powerful than you can possibly imagine." And then they wrote, "Obi Wan Kenobi said this to Darth Gensler in <laughs> CEC versus Star Wars One, right before he was struck down by an antique weapon." Security laws. <laughs> yep, but but the end result is the tech is still here, and now it, it essentially is pivoting into the decentralized version of itself. Mm -hmm. uh, because the, the corporation library will no longer exist. The library token, uh, uh, my understanding, will no. I, I, I don't know. I could be wrong about that. I don't think the library token will will exist any longer. Mm -hmm. I don't exactly. The library token will continue to exist. Oh, will continue to. Can you explain what's going on then? Maybe maybe you have a little uh, better insight into all this. Yeah. So, library, the company, they issued the library token on a. Um, I don't know which blockchain it was on. I'm assuming Ethereum. It's basically just a smart contract. Mm -hmm. So, it will continue to exist no matter what. But the the central authority that was benefiting from the sale of the library token will no longer exist. Right. the The company that is is in charge of making the th like had made the thing in the first place will no longer exist but the the platform the blockchain the token all that stuff will continue to exist just without a um just without the captain to steer the ship so now the captain has become everybody and not just one single corporation how is the library token done i haven't even checked taken a look at it i mean is it is it like is it crashed to basically zero or it's actually doing okay I wouldn't know. Let's look into it. Mm. Okay, let's look on seven days. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you do a chart of a long term. It's a, okay, yeah, that's a long term. That's where that, that you can see where the SEC action took place. Yeah, do all. Oh, uh, do oh, all. Yeah. Um. So 2018 bull run. Oh wow, it's from 2016. I mean, these were just the bull runs, but wow, even hit a dollar at some point. <laughs> but this, is, you know, library is an example of a of a crypto project that actually worked, though, right? I mean, it actually it actually provided utility, uh, mm -hmm. and 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 I believe it still will. I think it's gonna. I don't think it's going anywhere now that it, now that it's more. Of, forced to be more decentralized i think it's uh mm -hmm. will continue to to grow and be used for sure i hope so um we post all our monero uh content on there we've been doing that for years actually so i think we actually have quite a bit of library tokens because i think we get them every time we post videos or oh, something wow. sure. <laughs> mm. so now let's also discuss um this post by joseph cox he said new 
An incredible court record pulls back the curtain on a $30 million underground Bitcoin exchange running for years in the heart of New York. Massive bags of cash, drive-by pickups. This is what real criminals use, not services like Coinbase, which is true. Yeah, I thought this is this is right in my backyard here in New York. Uh, they're basically running like a local a local Bitcoin operation, where they were transferring uh, millions of dollars worth of cash for for Bitcoin for years. Oh. Um, and you know they're talking about how it was basically allowing dark market vendors and stuff to turn their their crypto gains into into cash into dollars we've seen quite a few examples of this right people getting busted for this so you know be careful out there right we always talk about the most ideal way to purchase your monero is with cash but you don't want to be in the business of selling monero for cash there's there's a big distinction there right if you personally need to convert monero into cash as far as I understand, even here in New York, there's there's nothing illegal about that. You could peer to peer uh, trade Monero for cash, but if you're in the business of selling Monero for cash, then you're you're a money transmitter at that point. You need to be properly licensed. Uh, otherwise, uh, you know, you're essentially uh, laundering money, right? And so clearly, what you need to do is you need to get into Monero. And you need never to leave or never to leave the crypto sphere anyway, because the problem is the problem comes up when you try to get when you try to leave and go back to fiat. Exactly. So really, you should just not go back to fiat. You should buy gratuitous. You should buy your eggs from gratuitous. You should buy your coffee from gratuitous. You can buy your uh, you can buy your cars. I just I, I think I read this week that uh, one of the luxury car brands is now accepting Bitcoin. I want to say it was like not yeah Lamborghini. That was it. I was about to say Jaguar, but I'm like no, I don't think that's right. Yeah, Lamborghini now accepts Bitcoin, just like really? Honda from a couple weeks ago. Yep. Yeah. The Honda Civic with your Dogecoin. All right, I think is that the news? A long, long news section. We knew it was going to be. Well, I want to play just a bit. Of, a bit. Oh of yeah, yeah. Play, play yeah. a little. Yeah. Like just like two minutes and then that's it. <laughs> we covered a lot, so no come. things we've been aware of for a while, but people simply haven't uh, confronted, they haven't combated, they haven't engaged with the, the strong and uh, sort of meaningful way. Uh, this is, is Edward hard, Snowden at the Bitcoin uh, conference. That is risky, uh, but it is necessary. Uh, Bitcoin has a privacy problem. Uh, everybody knows it, and this for many, as many years as I've been giving these talks now, uh, it is still on fix. The world has a privacy problem. Okay, so 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 what do you do about it? You know, people in the room go, oh, you know, let me do a coin join. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna erase this uh, by by shuffling these around, and you know, I'll do 200 levels of mix-ins or something like that. Uh, cool, yes. You know, I am proud of you for knowing that it's possible, uh, but no, stop. That that that's not what we're looking. For. Uh, contorting yourself to be able to fit to pass through the keyholes of the tyranny that is surrounding us. Uh, that's not the solution. The goal is not to, you know, wake up in the morning and be blessed with the perfect uh, suite of knowledge and skills that will allow you to dance through the Byzantine hell of a smartphone's, you know, evil, invisible, perfidious network traffic that is diming you out to everybody in the camp without asking your permission, uh, just in order to be able to interact with society in, in some approximation of safely, right? You go, oh, well, I'm got VPNs and I've got these things that are they're blocking this and using ad blockers and I've got a hard browser and whatever. Uh, that's not the goal. Uh, and it only benefits, you know, the, the smallest minority fraction. But when we talked about, you know, the old case of Lennon and these people who are, you know, sort of putting their axe on the ground, uh, it comes from the collective. There has to be a mass. There has to be enough people. Uh, and the more exclusively uh, the more exclusive your community becomes because of the burden of knowledge that it requires to participate in it, the smaller that collective will, will necessarily be. Uh, and we need to recognize that the status quo of the world it is, whether it's the way uh, sort of on-chain privacy analysis is happening and they're you know, tracking cross-chain transfers and you see people tweeting this stuff out. So like, oh, look, this person moved this, that person moved that. Uh, 
that's not normal. It's not acceptable, but it is here. Uh, it's inside the room. It's on your phone. It's in your pocket. It's you know, on the Wi-Fi. Uh, it's the cameras that watch you walk into the venue that now have vehicle recognition and person recognition baked into the algorithm. It's on the chip. Uh, it doesn't even cost the manufacturer anything extra to add in. They just got to enable the software. Uh, it is everywhere. So you should definitely check out this video. It's 28 minutes long from Bitcoin Amsterdam. And um, I'm happy that Edward Snowden actually mentioned Bitcoin's lack of privacy at the Bitcoin conference. Um, of course, he couldn't dare to possibly mention the uh, the orange crypto that solved no, the no, problems. No, 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 no. <laughs> only, only Zcash. Especially not at a Bitcoin conference. <laughs> but to be fair, yeah. I didn't even mention Zcash. He, yeah, I think he's he kind of stayed away, away from. Uh, yeah, um, he might have mentioned Zcash. I don't know. Did he mention it? He might have. No, I, he didn't. I watched the whole thing. Okay, yeah, I, I watched it too. I forgot that. I, I told you guys though, right? I tried to get him on the show like years ago, and we did talk to his people, and we almost got him on. He was almost willing to. Get, he wanted to get paid like ten grand or something. I forget what it was. Um, like 25, oh, I think like 25,000 yeah, like 25, and Whoa. then yeah. actually considering trying to make it happen i spoke to some people in the monero like would we like raise the funds it would have been ridiculous in he's retrospect just, uh, he's just a celebrity at this point and he was unwilling to do it when i told him i'd pay you in monero and then everything went cold after that like would, would you be willing to accept monero for the payment and, and the whole thing i mean don't deal fell apart don't, I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, I understand that he has to live. Like, he has to have money for rent and money for groceries and stuff like that. I get that. And speaking engagements, basically, from what I understand, are now his life because of the fact that, um, like, to my knowledge, at least, I don't think people would take him for a regular job. So speaking engagements kind of has to be his life. So I get that. But that is a little bit extreme. Yeah, just go figure out how to turn it into... 35k for like an hour or two go live off like here you are you're 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 out there you're you're the guy telling everybody that we need to basically opt out and move in you know move into a private digital cash and you you're not willing to use it yourself this Uh, is why some people think he's like uh like you know like fed or like uh part of a psyop or whatever which i mean i don't, I don't know if that's true but it's like he'll, go, he'll dance around like actual solutions right like there's a lot of things you'll talk about and like the biggest one is you know like in crypto and you'll like dance around like monero it's like i think i've heard him mention it once or twice yeah how are you not out there talking about monero all the time if you're if you believe what he uh, you know, purports to believe of in. course he was on like some initial zcash founders board or something right right he was one of the original signers of the on the initialization ceremony or the oh, I can't remember whatever they call it the something ceremony. There were seven of them, and I'm I'm pretty sure he was one of them. Yeah, he was. He was. Should be the default on any piece of software. Well, sounds sounds like Monero. 